How's it going guys? I am here today, Snipey the Pirate Gamer, to talk to you about the Switch and how awesome it is. But before I get into my opinion of its greatness, of its physique, I would like to talk to you about its shortcomings. Now every console has their problems, but the Switch does have some unique ones, all of which are pretty disturbing but not as numerous as people have made out to be. The first being that some of the users are experiencing the left Joy-Con desyncing, which is a big issue. Now, I don't know exactly what this issue is, and Nintendo's still looking into it, but I imagine it's a firmware update issue. Something to do with the OS, maybe. You know, we never know, but Nintendo is devoted to fixing all of these problems that I'm about to list, except for dead pixels, which is understandable. You know, every handheld, Every LCD screen has this problem of having that happen, and I even had it with my PSP and my PS Vita, so whatever. Other issues have been the inability for your Switch to pick up Wi-Fi, or pick up very low amounts of Wi-Fi even when sitting right next to a wireless router. That is an issue, but definitely something I think can be addressed by a firmware update. The next problem is definitely more an issue that needs to be addressed by Nintendo, but I feel like users need to take their time when dealing with their Switch. A lot of people have reported scratching their screen. I've watched people on their YouTube channel and the way that they pull their Switch out of the dock and it's like, oh my god, I mean it does need a little bit more care than that. I've had my Switch for a week and I have been very cautious about the way I put it in. And I'm going to show you later in the video what I did to my Switch to remedy this problem. But it is definitely something wrong with the dock. Um, there have been some that have been warped or something really truly pressing up against the screen. I mean, that's what I've heard. I haven't seen any pictures of this. But the, the Switch that I have, the dock that I have, it does come very close. You know, and so it's easy as you're putting it in or taking it out to scratch the screen. It is a plastic screen. But the reason they did that is because this thing is made for children. I mean, I watched someone drop this thing on its face ten times on concrete and it still didn't break. But they were also dropping it on its side and hitting the Joy-Cons, which are attached, you know, in a very sturdy manner to the device. But with the weight of the system, easy to, you know, mess up. So the system was still playable regardless of being somewhat broken, but the screen was still working. It had just run out of battery which they had said like two or three drops before it was about to die. It was on like 5%. And you know when you drop something with a battery, that jolts it. <laughs> so it's a sturdy device. You just need to put a screen protector on it. Like, I don't get what's so hard about that. Like, anytime you buy a new device, I don't care what it is, you buy a screen protector in that same moment. The only reason I didn't was because I had a limit on how much I was allowed to spend. And so I had to weasel that screen protector in later on in the week. But I went a week without a scratch. I put my plexigla plexiglass, I put my tempered glass protector easily on my system. Even with the issue I had at first laying it down, I fixed it. I'm actually going to do a video on how to properly do this. Because it's really not that hard and it really makes the difference. You don't have to worry about your screen. And if it does start to scuff, they give you a second one so you can take that one off and put it on. It's so lovely. It's 10 bucks. But I've seen too many sad, deathly sad iPhones, iPads, smartphones in general with cracked screens and it's just like, that's a hundred bucks you have to pay to get that fixed. Hmm, I got a $10 screen I put on mine. It's good. You know, like, it's a great system. And then, and once I have a, a an actual carrying case for it, it's going to be an awesome handheld. Well, somewhat handheld. It's a big handheld, but it's still within the handheld range. Another thing is uh, price points on some of the, the, the things. The accessories. Which, I can argue most of them, except for the dock. The dock is $90, which I think is unreasonable. But in a world where I think Nintendo expects a household of, say, four or five, at least two or three of those people may end up getting one. Um, because one gets one and they see how cool it is and hopefully more will get them and then you've got docks for days. But still, I don't see why Nintendo had to sell that piece of plastic for 90 bucks. I would imagine a dock that had expansion properties, maybe a hard drive, 
maybe you know an actual expansion pack like upgrade that allowed the system to run at 4k or you know just slightly you know better like the 64 did you know I, I I could imagine that being 90 bucks you know maybe even 150 bucks depending on how big this upgrade would be maybe even the ability to stream the the signal from the game I almost said gamepad from the switch to the TV through the dock so that you can have some off-screen TV play and maybe even potential Wii U games coming out on the switch even if you sold the system for $400, like they would pay for that if that's what you promised them was the ability to do those things. But again, by giving them the choice, you're not alienating your audience like you did with the Wii U. The Wii U did not need the gamepad. And if you had sold it without the gamepad for 200 bucks, we might have seen a different outcome, but you insisted. I love the gamepad. I tried to sell as many Wii U's as possible and I got three people to buy. Okay, like four or five people to buy but two or three of them ended up selling their system to someone else, which still means five people have Wii U's, but that's sad, you know, that they were just like, you know what, I'm over Mario Kart, it doesn't look like there's much else on this system for me, I'm out of here, which I think is a load of BS, but I am looking forward to a little bit more variety on the Switch Nintendo. What is another problem? I don't know if there's any more problems. I mean, the battery life is definitely an issue. It's two and a half hours to three hours, but like that's if I think two and a half hours is if you're you've got your brightness to maximum. I actually have to time this. I'm gonna do a test. I'm gonna do a test for you guys. But I believe that if you turn down the brightness, especially if you're playing at night and you don't need it that bright, turn down that brightness and maybe turn off the the rumble feature. I know that the Joy Cons have their own batteries. But every time the rumble is initiated, it's sending a signal to the system. So it's probably slowly draining from those rumbles. And that thing rumbles violently, like on a regular. So it's like, you know, maybe that would help. I don't know. But other than that, I mean, let's just say you live in a situation where you get a switch and there are none of these problems and that it's the switch that they wanted you to, that they intended you to have, you're gonna have an excellent experience. Um, because honestly, the chances of getting one of these messed up systems is pretty small. It will get smaller in time, like they will fix the quality control involved or something, you know, testing systems properly before releasing them. I mean, I don't know what could have transpired for these to, to be so defective, but Anyway, Nintendo will get past it and you will all be enjoying consistent experiences. So you have a system and it is the way Nintendo intended it. It's in your hands, you're playing it. You're gonna love the system. Legend of Zelda is one of the greatest games ever. And I mean, yes, there are even shortcomings to the game itself. I mean, it does, it looks beautiful, but it does have a look that's older. You know, it's not like super old, it's just, it definitely harkens back to the last generation and definitely to the Wii U because it's a Wii U game, you know? So I don't judge this game as a technical bar for the Switch. I judge this as a game on the Wii U that was put on the Switch so that it didn't fail. So that it got to see more households than it would have if only released on the Wii U. That just makes sense because Nintendo's putting all this effort, all these years. Satara Wada's soul is in this game. It was the last thing properly, like big title that he worked on. And so they wanted to give it the best chance that it could have and they put it on the Switch. Which it is, it ends up being a port. The, the Wii U one runs a little bit better. But you're not gonna see games really impress us of what the Switch is capable of because Breath of the Wild impresses me. Switch or Wii U, it doesn't matter. It is an impressively beautiful game, but you can tell that it's the older architecture of an older system, only on a, yeah, a mass scale. It's a huge game. You're gonna see games like Mario Odyssey and ARMS. Those games are gonna blow us away. I can't wait to see, and that's where we're gonna start the bar. Okay guys, in the description below, there will be a link to part two of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please, by all means, watch part two. And on either video, comment, like, tell me what you think of the Switch, what your experience with the Switch is, and what your hopes are for the Switch. And if you're feeling real supportive, hit that subscribe button. It don't take much energy, and it's so greatly appreciated. Anyway guys, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.
Okay guys, so this is my switch, which you can see has been ghetto MacGyvered. Um, I took a cloth that you would wipe screens with to clean smudges and cut it in half and taped it so that it would protect from those protrusions of plastic that are known for scratching the screen. I mean, it's not ideal, but it works. So for those of you who have already invested or plan on investing, this is your like first thing that must happen <laughs> along with getting a screen protector. But Nintendo, this is definitely something that you need to address. So yeah, get on that. Anyway guys, that's it for part one. I'll leave a link for part two in the description below. CIP the Pirate Gamer signing out. <laughs>